Hi everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah. Today I am gonna be sharing with you guys our most favorite post-Thanksgiving leftover turkey recipe. I actually cook this dish really only once a year. The kids look forward to it every year. It is an absolute must. It's a requirement on our homestead that after Thanksgiving, I save enough turkey that we can make this dish. And it is called crunchy turkey casserole and we love it. This is not a difficult recipe. It's actually pretty easy. I have made some modifications to this recipe because I like to do as much as I can homemade. So today it will require a couple processes that I would not have done in the past, but I no longer rely on the grocery store for a lot of pre-made food or processed foods. So today I'm gonna to be making some of the, the ingredients homemade that you don't have to. I'll tell you what you can just go to the grocery store to get if you don't wanna make all of these things homemade. But if you want to try it, I'm also gonna show you how to make some things homemade that you probably never even think about. So let's just jump in and get started. We're gonna start off by doing some chopping. All the chopping that needs to be done in this recipe, I'm just gonna take care of it right now. Everything's gonna be mixed up in this big bowl and then we'll transfer it into a casserole dish. I'm gonna start off with the turkey. We don't have a ton of leftover turkey this year, but that's okay, we've saved enough back to make this recipe. I actually need two cups of chopped diced turkey. So we're just gonna get that going, put that in this measuring cup. Now if you like to have help in the kitchen, this is definitely the job that you can enlist some help. When I was a little girl and my mom was doing cooking, I oftentimes did the chopping for her, whether that was meat or vegetables or nuts. And I've actually really come to enjoy uh, the chopping part. It's actually kind of therapeutic. I like to make it all the same uh, size pieces. I don't know, I'm just kind of weird like that. But it's also a very good job for kids. It starts teaching them safety around knives and just gets them in the kitchen uh, so that they're not afraid of cooking when they get older. Now this Thanksgiving, we raised our own turkeys. We raise all of our own meat or we hunt what we can't raise on our homestead. So this turkey we actually raised on our homestead. Uh, this one in particular, uh, we saved half to uh, cook for Thanksgiving and half to cook for Christmas. Normally we smoke our turkey halves for our holiday dinners, but this year the weather was so terrible outside that we decided to roast it. So that was something different for us this year. We've roasted them in the past, but if you've never had smoked turkey with smoked turkey gravy, oh my gosh, you guys need to try it for sure. Okay, so the turkey is done. Now we need to add some celery. Now I like celery and I think it adds to the crunchiness of this recipe. So I am going to chop up two ribs of celery into maybe half inch squares. The ends of your celery can be saved and put in the freezer and then when you make broth out of you know chicken bones or turkey bones or whatever, then you can add that to your stock pot and it will give a nice flavor to your broth. So don't throw these out and don't throw away your turkey bones. Stick them in a stock pot full of water, some celery, onions, peppercorn, and just let it simmer. Okay, the last thing that we need to chop up is just a little bit of onion. Now, only about two tablespoons or so of chopped onion because the flavor of the onion can really dominate this dish and I don't want that. I just want a little hint of onion. And I'm also going to chop these pieces pretty small so they really do incorporate well 
into the dish. Okay, that is about probably over two tablespoons, but definitely under a quarter of a cup. So this is all the chopping we need for now. Now we need to make a couple of our other ingredients. While I have these ingredients in here, I'm just going to put in the slivered almonds. This recipe calls for a half a cup of slivered almonds. You can toast them um, or not. I'm not going to this time, just for time's sake. I'm just gonna dump those in there. The slivered almonds add to the crunch of this dish and it's absolutely wonderful. So don't leave those out. Now, if you ask me, the best thing about casseroles is that in general, they're creamy and they just are so amazing and comforting during the fall and the winter. This casserole is also creamy. There are two things that need to be added into this casserole before we put it into the oven. The first thing is cream of chicken soup, condensed cream of chicken soup like you get at the grocery store. This recipe, you can just use one can of condensed cream of chicken soup, but I'm gonna make it and I'm going to share with you and teach you how easy it is to make at home. Okay, let's start making the condensed cream of chicken soup. Now, I love to bring you guys recipes and processes that seem super complicated and overwhelming, like nobody's gonna try these things ever in their life. And I like to bring them to you and show you really how simple they are and how easy it is to replace things from the grocery store. And this is one of those things, okay? It's super simple, easy, and you can do it. So let's come in closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing and how easy it really is. Okay, we are gonna start with making a roux. We're starting with three tablespoons of butter. Uh, this is our homemade butter, but you wouldn't need to use homemade butter if you don't have it. Just three tablespoons of butter, and we're gonna melt this on uh, medium to medium low heat. We're just gonna let that melt in there. Now that the butter is melted, I'm going to add three tablespoons of flour and we're going to mix that around and really combine them really well. Work out any of the lumps in there. We're going to keep stirring it, press out any lumps that you see. And we're going to let this cook in here for about a minute to a minute and a half. It's nice and bubbly, and so now we're gonna add some liquid. We're gonna add one half cup of chicken stock and one half cup of milk or cream or whatever kind of milk product you have. Um, I'm actually using, it's kind of pretty much half and half right now from our cow. Keep stirring that, I'm gonna to switch to whisk. Get that all incorporated. Now we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. While it's heating up, I'm gonna add some spices. Actually, I'm going to add about, I don't know, I would say just a dash of black pepper. A quarter teaspoon or so of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder just to give it a little extra flavor. Keep mixing that. When it comes up to a simmer, we're just going to keep stirring it until it thickens and it should only take a minute or two. Can you see that? How thick that is? It looks wonderful. Just a little bit longer, and then it will be about as thick as a can of condensed cream of chicken soup. All right, it's just about to boil, so I'm gonna turn off the heat and take it off the heat altogether. While we make our next ingredient. Okay, let's make the homemade mayonnaise. It is so easy, you guys. Only a few ingredients that I'm sure you have at home. I'm gonna be using a blender, 
but a food processor would also work. The best thing is a food processor that has like the extra small bowl up on top. I don't have one of those, but I would use it if I did have it. That would be the preferred method, but I don't. So I'm gonna use my blender. We're gonna start off with one whole large egg cracked in there. We're gonna put the top on and we're gonna blend this for about 20 seconds. Now we're gonna add a couple ingredients. We're gonna add one tablespoon of white wine vinegar, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna use pink Himalayan salt. And we're gonna blend that for another about 20 seconds. Okay, now is when the magic hopefully will start to happen. Sometimes mayonnaise, when you make it from home, it doesn't work out right and you need to start over. Uh, and that is because sometimes we add the oil too fast. Now what needs to happen is the oil that we put in here needs to emulsify with the egg. In order for it to emulsify properly, we need to add the oil very, very slowly. At first, just a drop or two at a time until we put about a quarter cup of oil in there. After that, we can slowly stream the rest of the oil into our mixture. It should get nice and thick and emulsify beautifully. Now you can really use any type of mild flavored oil. It really is up to you what kind of oil you use. Today, I am using sunflower oil. I would prefer to use avocado oil. I don't have any yet. I'm planning to switch us over to avocado oil instead of sunflower oil just because it's better for you. But until I used up all the sunflower oil, we're gonna stick with that. So like I said before, I'm going to just add this oil drop by drop for a while until I've gone through about a quarter of a cup of oil. Then I will add a slow stream of the rest of the oil totaling one cup of oil. Well, shortly after I put in the rest of the oil, I stopped this and scraped down the sides to make sure that all the oil got incorporated into the mayonnaise. And I am so pleased with what I found when I opened it up and looked inside. I want to take it out of here for you and put it in a bowl so you can just see how amazing this mayonnaise looks. So simple, hardly any ingredients. I know you can do it at home. Now we need three quarters of a cup of this mayonnaise. You guys, look at how fabulous this mayonnaise looks. Look how thick that is. That is amazing. It is awesome. And I am so glad that I taught you guys how to make homemade mayonnaise. Now I only need three quarters of a cup and Looks like I have a little bit more than that. So I'll take just a little bit out of there. And this will go in the refrigerator. Now this mayonnaise will last, you'll want to use it up um, from the refrigerator within a week. So it's that's why I like making these small batches. I don't have to worry about uh, using it up. Do you guys hear the ducks and the chickens and the roosters and everything outside? Today has been such a nice day that I have the window open. Okay. Let's stir up our cream of chicken soup that we made. We're gonna put the entire thing in our bowl. All of it. It's gonna be wonderful. And also, let's mix in the homemade mayonnaise. 
Let's just get that all mixed in and combined. Okay, we are almost done. I brought out one of my two quart corning ware dishes. I, um, I actually buttered it. I don't use the spray oil anymore. So you need to grease that just so it doesn't stick. I am gonna just put this entire thing in the corning ware and then we are going to add the last and the most yummy and important ingredient. Okay, the last and most important ingredient that makes this crunchy turkey casserole so yummy and crunchy are chow mein noodles. Okay, chow mein noodles are not very good for you, but I have not found a healthy alternative, an organic alternative. So this is one time a year that we splurge and have these, this is basically junk food, on top of our dinner. But it's so good, you guys. It just makes it so tasty. But first, we're gonna we're gonna crunch them up a little bit. Mm. Now we're not gonna use the whole bag. The recipe I have says to use one and a half cups, and you can use one and a half cups, but I don't measure. I just put a bunch on there. Spread them around. And I press them down in there. You don't have to do that, but I like to. Now there's not enough of them on here. I can see the casserole right through there. We need some more. This is so good. Now I have the oven preheating to 350. So I'm gonna put this right in the hot oven. Don't cover it. And we're gonna bake it in there until it is hot and bubbly everywhere. It could take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes until it is as hot as we'd like and bubbly around the side. I'll make sure to show you when it's done. Well, it's been 45 minutes and it's ready to come out of the oven. It is bubbly and it smells fantastic. I'm just gonna bring it over to this counter over here. And we're just gonna let it cool off and serve some up and take a taste. Well, this has been cooling for 20 minutes and I cannot wait any longer to put this in my bowl and give it a try. Looks so fantastic and it smells so good. Look at how wonderful that looks. Okay. It's still piping hot, but I can't wait any longer. It smells so good. I hope you try this. Okay, let's see. Well, it's definitely crunchy and creamy and it tastes amazing. The rest of the family cannot wait to get into this and have it for dinner. It is so good, you need to try it. I'll put the recipe down below along with the recipe for the uh, cream of chicken soup and the mayonnaise. Make sure you let me know how you like it. You guys, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead today in the kitchen making some great homemade food. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you share it with everybody you know. Subscribe below, and until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the Homestead Kitchen. Take care, and God bless.